though, uh, it's time to talk about movies because there's a new film coming out called The Great American Race Game. It's a documentary. Uh, it's looking at the problem uh, with the way that race is treated in our society today, not just here but also in the US, of a Martin Durkin uh, is, of course, the director of it. Uh, he's made the film. It's going to be shown um, at the screen on the green here in England, um, presented by Don't Divide Us, which is an organisation that I certainly uh, feel an awful lot of sympathy with. Martin, a very good morning to you. Welcome. Morning, Mike. Thanks very much indeed. Tell us first of all um, what the film's about, how, uh, and then and then we'll get to you know why you decided to make it. Well, it's about race politics in um, uh, America and in Britain, and um, I wanted to make it because it, the race politics just didn't seem right to me. It seemed uh, uh, with the death of George Floyd, it seemed to me that a lot of kind of left wingers were almost kind of hovering over this horrible event like vultures. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it just didn't smell right. All the anti-racism rhetoric. I mean, obviously, you know, it's, a, a, you know, we, we need to fight racism. It's horrible. We need to fight it. But the way they were doing it or the way they, that, 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 that they're talking about it, I think seems absolutely wrong. I mean, if you vote Brexit, you're a racist. Yes. If you like Nigel yes. Farage, you're a racist. You know, if you vote Trump, you're a racist. Um, all football supporters are racist. You know, there's just something wrong with it. There really is. And everything yeah, yeah, yeah. now is seen through this kind of ridiculous prism, isn't it? I mean, we had a story just the other day um, that Curry is now racist. The countryside has been branded racist. You know, um, we as a radio station have been branded racist. I get called a racist all the time uh, by people on the left, which couldn't be further from the truth. And, um, you know, it's almost as though they want it to be true. You know, they want you to be a racist so that they've got somebody to fight. Yeah. And of course, if you, uh, you know, it does, it, it does no good service to fighting actual racism if you just call all white people a racist. Yeah. If you find racism where there isn't any, um, if you accuse people of being racist who aren't, I mean, and, I, and the, part, the purpose of the film was to find out why that was happening, where that came from. Yes. And it's very interesting to me what's happened in America, because I lived there uh, from about 1983 to 1992. So I had a pretty good grounding in the sort of the Reagan era, if you like. And I barely re I re barely recognise the place now. When I go back, I've still got family that live over there. I don't get it. I don't understand what's happened to their politics. I don't understand what's happened to the Democrats. I just don't understand what's happened to America. And I think that's part of the appeal of uh, Donald Trump, because I think a lot of Donald Trump supporters are wondering, where was that? where's that America gone? Mm. It seems that a kind of largely left-wing blob machine has taken over the country, as it has, I think, in the large parts of the Western world, you know, the, 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 the technocracy or whatever you want to call it. Um, and they are, that does not reflect the interests of ordinary people. Mm. No, that's right. Because when I lived there, it was very much a place which was unlike Britain, which was one of the reasons I left Britain to go there, uh, was that it wasn't about class. It wasn't about privilege. It was all about if you wanted to work hard, anybody could get anywhere. And I remember sitting uh, in the back of one of those, you know, those car services you take to the airport. It's called Skyline, I think. And I was in the in the in the car with this guy who worked for the Times. He used to work in Russia and he worked out this guy was speaking with a sort of English accent, but with a Russian um, twang. And he said to the guy, where are you from? And the guy went, New Jersey. And that was it. It was like he didn't come from Russia anymore. He moved to America. He was American. He had the American dream. He was working hard, raising his family. That seems to have all gone. Yeah. And the irony is, obviously, there's been an awful lot of racism in America, you know, in, in, in times yes. gone by and even in <clears throat> recent decades. But the, actually, it's a good news story. It's been getting a heck of a lot better in America. Um, and uh, but that's not the story that you, you know, you're, you're allowed to be told. No, but not only that. If you say that, you know, do you know what? I'm colorblind. I do, as far as I, I don't care what color you are, I'm fine. You will be attacked as being racist for saying that. If you say, I don't want to, I feel uncomfortable calling people black and calling people white. Yeah. Why can't we just call them, you know, Ted and Charlie and George right. from now on? You know, you will be attacked by the anti-racists for yes. saying that. Well, That's I think I think a lot of people are confused now, aren't they? Because, you know, you're told, well, you can't use that term and you can't use this term. And, you, don't, you know, you thought you were using a term that was acceptable. And then it turns out it's not acceptable anymore since yesterday. No. And, it's, and it creates uh, anxiety and paranoia in ordinary people's interactions with each other. Because, mm. you know, in the mm. workplace... You're working on egg, walking on eggshells because you think, my God, if I say the wrong thing, use the wrong word, am I going to be on a disciplinary proceeding? Mm -hmm. You know, is there going to be a complaint? Employers are nervous about employing, you know, people who are quote unquote black because they think, my God, you know, if they don't work out and I try to get rid of them, am I going to be able to get mm -hmm. rid of them? You know, am I going to get accused of something? Yeah. You know, it, it creates divisions. 
No, absolutely right. So how is the film constructed, Martin? Talk us through the sort of storyboard, uh, if, you, if you could. Well, I wanted to see the, the kind of history of where it came from, and that led us back to looking at the Democrats. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that the Democratic Party was the racist party in America. They were the party of the South. They defended slavery, Jim Crow, segregation, and all the rest of it. It was mm. said that the KKK was the terror wing of the Democratic Party, it was said. Wow. So you have this terribly racist party up to the kind of 1950s, and then they run into trouble because although they've tried to keep black people from voting, it was clear by then that black people were going to get the vote, come what may. Um, and most black people lived in the South, which was their heartland. Mm. So they were going to get mm -hmm. annihilated when ordinary black people started voting. So there was a huge effort to flip themselves around. And like a lot of socialist parties, they used well, um, uh, public spending in order to try and win those votes. And so they sent welfare officers into black communities, literally door to door, to sign people up on welfare. And part of the film is about the devastation to those black communities caused by that flood of welfare in the 1960s because you had poor black communities before then had high marriage rates low divorce rates low crime rates very low crime rates um very few children born out of wedlock all that sort of thing all of that changed when when welfare similar stories to a lot of places in the world welfare floods into a community a lot of things change um and a lot of the problems you see in black ghettos in america today are really caused by welfare not racism but of course if you're a socialist you don't want to to blame welfare and so you will blame it on racism yes of course and so uh, where can we see this film i know it's going to be shown at the screen on the green here in london islington um is it going to be available generally it is online now and i would love people to see it because it was uh, uh we funded it ourselves so we um we we are desperate for people to watch it it's okay. www.greatamericanracegame.com okay um it's a it's a fun it's a, it's a fun film oddly enough given the time and given the uh, subject. It's thinking about it might be too heavy, but actually it's got a lot of gags in. It's a fun watch. Okay, brilliant. Well, listen, Martin, if you've tweeted out the link, I shall retweet it and make sure people get along and, uh, and, and watch it. And thank you very much indeed for taking the time to talk to us. Cheers, Mike. Thanks very much indeed. Martin Durkin, documentary filmmaker. The film is called The Great American Race Game. I will be tweeting out a link to it so that you can watch it. Sounds fascinating. Sounds really interesting. And just right up your street, in fact. Uh, com common sense are looking at an issue which is so badly kind of derailed and which has been so badly kind of hijacked by uh, the leftists and the people who would like to cause division, uh, not just in our society, but in all societies. Uh, and it's got to be stopped. You have to fight the good fight, I'm afraid. And you know that that's the right thing to do. 